So, good morning, everyone. Hello. <laughs> so, welcome to the second installment of our Kaigangan Biodiversity Research webinar series. And I am Elaine Vivian Weva, your host for today. Um, our webinar aims to raise awareness on the conservation and sustainable use of Kaigangan biodiversity through a series of online talks from our very own experts. This webinar is made possible by Conserve Kaigangan, a research program of the University of the Philippines, Los Banos, and Samar State University, funded by the DOSD under the Grants in Aid programs. So um, we'd like to uh, say hi to everyone and um, please feel free to introduce yourselves in our comment um, comments section on Facebook and in the chat box of Zoom. So before we begin, <laughs> we would like to remind you of some of our gu guidelines. Um, okay, so here. So just a few guidelines. So first is um, always keep your microphones off. And next is um, for your questions about our speaker later, you can send it um, through our Zoom chat box or chat box or Facebook Live. And then um, please stay um, all throughout our program because we will um, share the evaluation form later via Google Forms. And um, certificates will be given to those who filled out our evaluation form. So the links will be shared to our comment sections later. Okay. So for oh, um maybe let's see um from here on our chat. So <laughs> again, good morning everyone, and again for Let's begin by introducing our speaker for today. So she is an assistant professor of the Animal Biology Division of the Institute of Biological Sciences, UPLB. Um, she finished her MS in Wildlife Studies degree also from the same university. And she teaches courses on wildlife biology and zoology and has written publications in the movement, diet, distribution, systematic, and diseases of leopard cats, seabeds, and other wildlife. So she is also our program's digital content creator who manages our Facebook page and YouTube channel. So yeah, she is one of the main persons responsible for keeping our page um, pretty. <laughs> and let us all welcome and yeah, let me see your clapping reacts to our speaker for today, Assistant Prof. Um, Desa Marie Fernandez. Thank you very much, Elaine. Okay, I think I will start sharing my screen. Ayan. Kita ba? Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending this webinar. Uh, I'm Des Fernandez, and I've been a wildlife biologist for 11 years. And in this webinar, We'll be talking about both plants and animals, but you may notice a bias. Uh, don't worry if you have any plant questions. We have our plant biologist colleagues from the project who are also here. Uh, by the way, this lecture might be a little bit different because my slides are mostly photos. Uh, minimal, minimal words lang usually, just some scientific names and number of species. So mostly I'll show you pictures and more of Quentuhan session to about the research we did in Giwan. So I hope you enjoy that. Okay. So first of all, forest over limestones or kaigangan are major fossil for speciation and they serve as important biodiversity arcs that contain unique species because of their unique topology. But despite its high species endemicity and environmental heterogeneity, forests over limestone are more vulnerable since they recover slowly due to relatively dry habitat that you can see here and shallow soil, which can be irreversible once damaged. 
And this is especially true for Giwan Eastern Samar, which is hit by many typhoons annually, but particularly badly by Typhoon Yolanda in 2013. Much of the municipality, including our study site in Calicoan Island, is within the Giwan Marine Reserve Protected Landscape and Seascape. This protected area is notable for its rich marine resources, which are used, utilized by local residents, the academe, and of course, surfers. Yes, surfers. Calicoan Island has great waves crashing into its beaches like ABCD Beach from April to November. And you can see here a view of that area. And this area has been dubbed the surfing capital of the Visayas and various surfing competitions are held here. And I was very excited to get a chance to do a study here, not only because I'm a wildlife biologist, but also because I myself am an avid surfer. So not only that, another feature of this island, it is its history for being a strategic location for American forces during the Second World War. And close to 100,000 U.S. soldiers were assigned here in Giwan Air Base at the time. And one of these is Nathan S. Potter, who did the only published study of the terrestrial biodiversity, in particular birds, in the island. And though Giwan is rich, rich in terrestrial and marine resources, most research conducted here have been focus, focused on marine plants and algae and not the terrestrial resources. So we wanted to evaluate the faunal and floral composition of forest over limestone in Giwan. And what we did was we conducted a biodiversity assessment in the area on October 8 to 11, 2019, before the pandemic. But of course, before that, we acquired a permit from the ENR and from the UPLB Institutional Animal Care and Use Committee. Since Calicoan Island here, has the largest continuous forest over limestone area in the protected area, GMRPLS. We set up nine 20 by 20 vegetation plots across the island in areas like Pagnamitan, Ngolos, and outside of Lino Cave. And we use two types of methods to determine the plant species composition of each sampling site. The quadrat or plot technique for trees that are one meter or taller, and the light intercept technique for smaller understory plant species. The methods that we use for faunal assessment were adopted and modified from the Biodiverse Assessment and Monitoring System, which is a set of standard protocols used by the DNR in all protected areas across the country. Some of these methods include a simple line chance account for the survey of birds, wherein we used binoculars and cameras to observe and identify bird species. To capture birds and non-volant mammals, 12-meter mist nets were set along possible flyways, such as forest edges and feeding trees. And to capture small non-volant mammals or non-flying mammals, we used steel box traps baited with roasted coconut and peanut butter, social, and we set them along the transect. Herpetofauna were either hand-captured or retrieved from pitfall traps like this one. And larger wildlife were detected through other indices of presence, such as feces and footprints. An example here is a wallowing site for uh, wild pigs. Of course, note that all captured wildlife were carefully handled and released in their site of capture after we identified their species. And this was not an easy task. You can see here a photo of our team traversing the difficult terrain which includes dangers such as sharp rocks and deep ravines. And that is the difficulty of assessment in forest over limestone, which is why not a lot of research has been done in these areas. And in the results of our fieldwork, we recorded a total of 41 plant species belonging to 18 plant families, five of which were Philippine endemic species, Nine were species with threatened conservation statuses, according to the ICN Red List, and five were threatened according to the Philippine Red List listed in the NR Administrative Order 2017-11. And some notable plant species include Wallaceo dendron celebicum, a vulnerable tree species, which is harvested for its good quality timber, which can be used in furniture making. Fortunately, because of that, it is categorized as vulnerable based on the DNR DAO. 
Another notable plant species is Aquilaria cumingiana, which is commonly known as agar wood. It's found in the Philippines and Indonesia, and it's highly prized for its fragrant resin that is utilized, utilized for various economic uses. And of course, over-harvesting has led to the rapid decline of its natural population and is listed as vulnerable in IUCN and the Philippine Red List. And we also have Hansea Wenzeliana, which is a new locality record of this Philippine endemic tree species. Based on literature, its native range is only Mindanao Island, but the occurrence of these three species in Calicoan Island, uh, it's not surprising because Samar is a con constituent of the Mindanao uh, region. And we also recorded 21 vertebrate wildlife species. Six of them were endemic to the Mindanao Paik or the place to see aggregate island complex. So to explain this briefly, Mindanao and Samar share many endemic species in common. And they were theoretically part of a single land mass until the sea levels rose and separate them during the last ice age. So the numbers in parentheses in the following indicate the number of species that are Mindanao Pike endemic per taxa. So the first taxon is amphibians. So there was one species that was found and it was a Mindanao Pike endemic. And eight reptile species, three of them were Mindanao Pike endemics. And then six bird species and three volant mammal or flying mammal or bat species, one of which was Mindanao Pike endemic. And there were three non volant mammal species, one of which was Mindanao Pike endemic. So, trigger warning first, there will be show, I will show photos and videos of frogs and lizards, snakes, other creatures like rats and bats. So, if you are sensitive or you have a zoophobia of these uh, animals, so just be warned. So our first animal that I, we will look at is the only amphibian species that we recorded, which was Platymantis guantheroi or Gunther's wrinkled ground frog. This is a Mindanao bike endemic, and some of the individuals who were found, we found were on fallen logs, but most of them were actually observed perching on karst substrate. And then they would climp, quickly jump into limestone crevices to escape when they are disturbed. So this species is currently listed least concern, but it could be an important indicator of health of the karst, karst ecosystem since frogs are sensitive to temperature and environmental changes. And among reptiles, we recorded the extremely venomous Tripidolemus subanulatus or the North Philippine Temple Pit Viper. So this is an apex predator that controls the population of its prey species, such as rodents and smaller herpetofauna. Here we have Broncochella cristatella, or the green crested lizard. And fun fact, this bright green lizard can change color into dark brown when threatened. In fact, this is the same exact individual uh, uh, photographed in separate times. And next here we have a video of Draco bimaculatus. So this is also called the two-spotted flying lizard. And this lizard has a pair of wing-like patagia, so it has wing-like skin on its side that allow it to glide from tree to tree. So it's not really a flying lizard, it's a gliding lizard. And in particular, you will see here that the male has a dewlap under their neck, which can serve to make them look bigger to their enemies or to attract females. Okay. And then we also have this uh, Certodactylus sumoroi. This represents a new island record for this species in Calicoan Island. Previously, it was only found in Samar. And some individuals were found hiding in limestone crevices in uh, Pagnamitan. And this gecko has a pair of cantal stripes on its head, and uh, they have light-colored bands that have a bow-like or bow-tie-like shape. And it's not yet in any endangered species list. It was newly discovered in 2010, so it requires further study to assess its conservation status. For birds, we found Hypsipetes filipinus, or the endemic Philippine bulbul. Bulbul po talaga yung pangalan ng bird. And Monticola solitarius, which is the eastern blue rock thrush, seen here perching on some limestone. So both of these species eat fruits and insects and help shape the ecosystem by dispersing seeds and controlling the population of their insect prey. 
among mammals, we found Tenochirus minor, or the lesser musky fruit bat, which is endemic to the Mindanao Pike, and the Philippine endemic Ratus everetae, or the Philippine forest rat, with its dark brown tail with a white and strangely, one of the problems we had with trapping was that we found traps being occupied by uh, crabs and hermit crabs, uh, presumably attracted to the scent of the bait. So, although this is not surprising, since some of the study sites were very close to the seashore, but this affected the uh, effectivity of our trapping. So, nababasin yung trapping success because they were occupied by non-target animals. And generally, we found that the forest over limestone in Kalikoan is young and dominated by saplings and small diameter sized trees. So the species riches na is below average compared to tropical forests in Southeast Asia, but this could be attributed to the possibility that forest over limestone in Giwan is still recovering from the heavy rains and destructive winds of Typhoon Yolanda in 2013. And as this ecosystem re continues to recover, the information gathered through this research can be used in recontextualizing tourism management strategies in Giwan Marine Protected Landscape and Seascape to be more eco-focused. One of our study sites you can see here is Lino Cave, kasi malino yung tubig sa loob ng cave. So it's in Barangay Sulangan, which is a popular tourist attraction. And the trail to the cave we found could actually be great for bird watching if it can be managed properly so if konti lang yung ia may limited number of people lang na ia allow at one time you know and further given's reputation as the surfing capital of the visayas may attract more tourists as the world opens up again which in turn could encourage more development on the island this is good, of course, economically, but it could be best if this could also be closely monitored and managed to conserve the biodiversity of the area. So if you want to learn more about this study, you can find the full publication in the Journal of Marine and Island Cultures. So this is the website here. And also, the results of the study has been used in various communication, education, and public awareness materials. And disseminating knowledge, especially through this webinar and other channels about the biodiversity of Samar's forest over limestone, will be crucial for gaining local and international support for its conservation and protection. And before I end this webinar, uh, I would like to thank the University of the Philippines, Espanas, Summer State University, the Department of Science and Technology, BOST Picard, the PAMB of GMRPLS, the local government of Giwan Eastern Summer, and our partner PO, the BOSIS. Okay, so thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I would be willing to answer them. Well, thank you for um, that presentation, uh, Ambes Fernandez. So it's very informative, and at the same time, um, the uh, it is so um, interesting and so beautiful seeing all those uh, plants and animals in Taiwan Eastern Samar. So um, we have um, audiences here from uh, Eastern Summer State University, from Summer State University. So I'd like to say hi to them. And um, please, uh, well, again, I have to, uh, I'd like to remind you again that um, we will um, share um, the link for our evaluation forms later. And if you have any questions for our speaker, um, we would like to remind you to, you can, uh, put it in our chat box or in our comment section of our Facebook live. So maybe we can uh, try to answer our question and answer. So here's um, Prof, um, Assistant Prof Ali Avila Verde to facilitate our Q&A. Um, Hi, good morning. So thank you, Professor uh, Des Fernandez for your comprehensive talk regarding the biodiversity of the Kaigangan Forest. So uh, personally, I like the picture of the somewhat disgruntled bulbul. Parang, <laughs> hindi, parang hindi siya masaya nung 
nahulan niya siya for a photo op. Okay? So, we will now proceed to answer some questions from our audience. So, um, nung nag-sign up kayo with the form, um, some already opted to place their questions in. So, we will accommodate those questions first. And then, we will be checking the Zoom uh, Zoom chat box and the FB live comments for your questions. So the first question comes from Lawrence Jacob Alterado of UPLB. So Professor Dez, what were some major differences in terms of biodiversity in the forests over limestone compared to forests in mountains such as Mount Makilin? Ah, okay. So the diff the main difference is yung dominant type of forest niya. So as I mentioned, si Kalikawan Island is dominated by forest over limestone. And then si Mount Makiling, yan ay um, tropical lowland evergreen rainforest. So typically, mas diverse si tropical evergreen rainforest. And also, si Makiling nasa Luzon place to see aggregate island complex siya. And then si Kalikawan ay nasa some, uh, rather greater Mindanao Paik. So, yung species in terms of fauna nila are in different areas and they speciated differently. So, naging iba yung species nila in these two different pikes. So, those are the main uh, differences. Also, mataas ang Mount Makiling. It's about, I think, yung maximum is about 1,000 uh, meters above sea level, I think. And then, si Kalikoan, mas maliit siya and also very close siya to the seashore. So, actually, marami ring, um semi-marine, semi-aquatic species, like kanina yung na-mention yung crabs. So maraming crabs na umaakit ng bundok at natatrap dun sa rat traps namin. And also, many of the birds dun sa study ni Potter were shorebirds kasi nga malapit sila sa shore. So it's also an important migratory area for some of the migratory birds. All right. So thank you, Professor Des, for that very um, comprehensive answer no may com may uh, elements pa pala of um, geographical separation mm -hmm. kaya nagkakaroon ng differences okay so for our next question um, from Raymark Paul Rigor from UP Baguio so does the presence of limestone in an area affect the type of flora and fauna that can live and be found there mm -mm. yeah definitely it affects yung different types of flora in there Kasi mababaw yung soil dahil dun sa presence ng rock, rock, out, rock outcrops. And also dahil dun sa limestone because it's made of calcium carbonate, marami yung calcium deposit niya kumpara sa other nutrients that you need for plants. So it's actually a very stressful environment compared to our other forests like um, maybe in tropical lowland evergreen forest. And also for animals, uh, mahirap din siya kasi syempre yun nga, mababa yung soil since mababa yung plant diversity. Uh, possible na bumaba rin yung animal diversity because the niches that are available to them are less. And also, the good side of this naman is that ang mataas ang diversity here is yung snails because of the calcium um, content ng forest over limestone. And although we, uh, I did not discuss it here, we have an upcoming paper and uh, there will be a presentation at the ASBP conference, I think from one of our uh, the students uh, under our project, si Harold, who is looking at the micro snails. Yung macros, macro snails, we already have a poster for that, that you can look at in our Facebook page. So yun, so yun yung, um, and yung difference ng forest over limestone because of yung dahil mababaw yung soil and yung calcium deposit niya, uh, it affects yung plants and animals differently. Okay, so thank you po, Professor Des. So again, for those who are also interested sa other differences ng um, limestone, limestone in an area versus dun sa mga typical uh, mountains natin, you can check our Facebook page for the um, infographics that have been posted. Gaya nga ng sabi ni Professor Des. Okay, so a next question from Belinda Liwanag. Um, she asks, how diverse is the forest? So kind of related sa mga previous questions. Mm -mm. Uh, yeah, so na mentioned po nga before, uh, generally less diverse sila. Pero, and also, we compared yung species richness ni forest over limestone sa Kaligawan versus 
uh, other tropical forests in Southeast Asia. And usually, the range of species richness is between 60 to 250 species per hectare in other tropical forests in Southeast Asia. And it's less dito sa Kalikawan. And um, total nila is 41 floral species lang. Uh, belonging to 18 plant families. So if you looked at other studies, even other studies of forest over limestone, mas mababa siya compared sa other studies, perhaps because of the damage that was brought on by the storm, and perhaps because Kalikawan Island is a geologically new area compared to the old, old uh, forest over limestone, uh, limestone areas in the middle of summer in Summer Island Natural Park. So because yun nga, it's geologically geologically new and dahil nga, it's prone to damage because of typhoons, maybe that's why less yung diversity niya compared to other forests over limestones and other forests in Southeast Asia generally. Okay, thank you po again, uh, Professor Yudes, for your answer. So, yan, so meron pa tayong other related questions. So, from Wesley Bajo, so he... Uh, they ask, um, why is kaigangan biodiversity important? So, medyo related din, no? Okay, <laughs> Professor Des, take it away. Yeah, so I think yung value ng kaigangan diversity is the value of diversity, biodiversity in general. So when we have more environments that support different kinds of species, the more species we have, the more stable their environment and ecosystem will be. Because pag marami yung niches and marami yung species occupying the different niches in our ecosystem. So, uh, ang tawag dito, pag nawala ang isang species, hindi ba bagsak yung buong ecosystem? So, pag nawala yung diversity, magiging mas stable yung ecosystem. Yun. So, the value of kaigangan diversity is also a cultural uh, and aesthetic value in terms of the people of Samar because unique environment ito sa kanila. So, Samar Island has some of the most extensive forests over limestone uh, ecosystems in the country. And I think it's important for us to protect these areas as also the pride of Samar. Okay, so thank you po, Professor Des. So, ayan, so another realization for all of us na Although malalayo yung lugar, we are kind of interconnected pa din. Mm -mm. Anyway. Okay. So, um, another question from Bianca Yumul. So, she asks, regarding trapping, what should be considered to lessen the chances of trapping non-target organisms? So, ano kaya ang uh, solution po, Professor Des, sa mga nakikibisitang crabs and snails nung study nyo? Yeah, yun nga yung naging problem namin kasi I think they were attracted to the bait. But of course, unfortunately, the roast coconut and peanut butter uh, is also attractive to rats. So, uh, yun nga, yung rats sana yung target namin, pero ang nahuli namin yung hermit crabs kasi nandun din sila sa area kasi syempre part din yun na environment nila. What, one thing you could do is you can vary the type of bait. So, in this case, may nakabukas na mic yata from someone else. Wala naman akong background music. So, baka hindi na rin nag ka. Anyway, so you can vary the types of bait that you can use. So, like, instead of roasted coconut and peanut butter lang, pwede kayo maglagay ng daing, pwede kayo maglagay ng saging. Okay? Para, kasi attractive din naman yun sa rats. And also, as... Uh, I think in summer, meron din yatang squirrel, although wala kaming nakita. So, they might be more attracted to fruits. And, yun. So, maybe vary the area. And pag alam mo na, na on the first trapping night, uh, maraming hermit crabs and crabs in that area, maybe try to move your trap line to a different area with less uh, less hermit crabs and more rats. Yun. So, sometimes uh, faunal and also floral uh, biodiversity studies in general, uh, it is a process of um, tweaking and adjusting, especially to climate and environment and other factors. So that's why I love being in this line of work because I get to solve problems, sometimes unexpected problems like this. So, and so summarize, maybe change your bait 
or maybe change your trap line location. Okay, thank you po doon sa mga points to ponder na yon, Professor Des. So hopefully, Bianca, if ever you're going to sample your um, wildlife species, so keep in mind yung mga pieces of advice ni Professor Des. Okay, um, our next question comes from um, the birthday boy. Wow, <laughs> happy birthday, sir. Professor, um, or doctor, in essential, Buot from UPLB. So, Professor Des, uh, Dr. Buot asks, can you explain how SAMOR has been part of Greater Mindanao? Mm -mm. Okay. Unfortunately, wala akong, handa na, wala akong handa na visuals for that. But if you can think of Mindanao, okay, si, diba, si Mindanao Island, right above it to the east is Leyte and then Samar. And way back in the last Ice Age, all of these, dahil Ice Age nga, diba? So frozen yung tubig um, in the polar areas and other areas. So mas mababa yung sea level. So it used to be that Leyte, Samar, Mindanao, Bohol, and other adjacent islands, isang continuous island lang sila. So it's one place to see an aggregate island complex. And nung natunaw yung tubig after the last Ice Age, tumaas by 120 meters yung sea level. And this caused them to be separated by water. And once these were separated by water, some of the species nag-speciate na rin. But then compared to, say, Luzon, which is a different place to see an aggregate island complex, mas iba yung species between the Luzon Pike and the Mindanao Pike. All right, so thank you for that, uh, Professor Des. So, ayan, so may ice age pa lang kinalaman kung bakit nagkaroon <laughs> ng separation. Okay, so our next question comes from Chenaline De Los Santos from UPLB. Hi, so, Chen. Ayan, <laughs> familiar pala si uh, Students Des. ko yan. <laughs> Napilitan lang umatid. Joke lang, joke lang. <laughs> okay, so Professor Des, ang kanilang phone-in question ay, what advice can you give for those students who wish to study the faunal assemblage of a certain study site wherein no biodiversity study has been conducted? Mm -hmm. Is it better to target a group of species, say for example, volant mammals, or the whole faunal assemblage book? And what mm -hmm. methods can you suggest? And mm -hmm. also, she sends her congratulations on your talk. Thank you, Chen. Okay, so medyo complex yung question and maraming factors involved. Pero uh, the great thing about the Philippines is marami pa tayong actually areas na hindi pa na e explore. And sometimes it's because of how far the area is. Sometimes it's because of unfortunately uh, peace and order situations in some of our areas. So in those cases, of course, always have to coordinate with your DNR, your Sometimes, for example, sa amin, sa summer, we coordinated with the army because of the peace and order situation. So, safety first. And then, next is, should you focus on one uh, group versus est uh, establishing a baseline for the entire biodiversity? Uh, the best answer to that is, depende sa yo, Depende sa budget mo, depende sa oras mo. Ideally, mas maganda sana if one time, big time lang yung assessment. Hindi mo one time forever, pero like, you will save more money and resources. If you can get your friends, kunyari ako, mammals ako, I have a friend na herps naman siya. I have a friend na halaman person, plantita, plantito, ganun. I have a friend who is uh, specializes in birds. So, uh, in my graduate days, ganun kami mag-operate. So, O sino tong, sino friend mo na magaling sa ganto? O sama natin yan. O sino friend mo na magaling sa to? Sama natin yan. Papakainin lang natin yan. Tapos kasama na siya sa data. Saka sa publication, masaya na siya. Usually, ganun kami ng barkada namin ng MS na operate So, it's also a good chance to get to know other people and um, forge relationships and teamwork. So, I would recommend that. Pero if you are short on time, if you are short on resources, okay lang rin naman yung just to focus on one uh, one species. Kung wala ka masyadong friends or hindi ka siya masyadong friendly, pwede ka rin mag mag-coordinate sa DNR. Kasi ang DNR, every few years or every year, I think, nagkakonduct sila ng assessment talaga. 
So, baka what you can do is coordinate with them. Pag mag assessment ka, sama ka, pero yung focal species mo lang study mo while at the same time they're studying other species. So, yun yung mga discarte. So, actually, the study of wildlife and uh, uh, field work in general, it's all about discarte. <laughs> Okay, thank you po for that, Professor Des. So, ayan, so mga, sa mga students or sa other researchers na balak gumawa na ng kanilang sariling research cinematic universe, <laughs> tap, your, tap your expert friends at kung sino gusto mag-explore. Also, Eratum, sorry, that question was asked by Angelique Carsola. Uh, hi, ang guest. Student ko rin siya. Yeah. <laughs> Similar uh, cinematic universe pa din. Uh, okay. So, uh, again, um, ito, this question really now comes from Chenalyn De Los Santos. Mm -mm. So, um, she's from UPLB and she is interested in the data gathering of the study. So, how does it look like considering that it's a challenging habitat to explore? Are mm -hmm. there techniques the researchers came up with that's very unique to this study area. So, thank you, Dopo. Mm -hmm. And uh, congratulations, Dopo, uh, Professor, <laughs> Herna uh, Professor Fernandez, uh, for the great discussion. Kota na daw po sila sa knowledge. Wow, thank you. And thank you, Chen. So, actually, uh, this is a topic that is discussed in one of our future publications, which is a, uh, a sort of manual that focuses on forest over limestone uh, ecosystems and how to assess their biodiversity. Because yun nga, maraming safety considerations. So actually, it's good to have um, safety equipment like hard hats, ganun. If kailangan yung mag-climb na medyo delikado yung climb, you might need climbing equipment, ganun. Pero for us naman, we try to steer away from those areas and must... Uh, kailangan actually nung plant people namin yung mas level ng content area, although hindi may iwasan na may incline. So, safety first one, dapat meron sa inyong may marunong na first aid. And in terms of the um, particular modifications of the actual funnel diversity assessment, uh, one thing you could do, for example, sa bats, ang standard natin ng trap night, di ba, is one trap night is a 112 meter mist net. But if you have an area that's on a limestone ridge na less than 12 meters, o kaya it's in an area na merong dalawang limestone on either side that's less than 12 meters, paano ka magsaset up ng mist net na 12 meters? What you can do is you buy 6 meter mist nets. So you set them na ang bibilangin mo yung 12, pero you can angle them such that masasave mo yung space ng 12 meters. That's still considered 6, 12 meters, kasi 12 meters yung surface area niya, kahit dalawa siyang 6, pero masasave mo lang yung angle niya in terms of yung actual length niya. So that's one technique, pag narrow yung area mo, you can use two 6 meter mist nets instead of one 12 meter mist net. And then multiply mo yung trap nights, don't forget dapat 80 to 90 trap nights minimum, okay? And uh, what else? Sa uh, trapping ng rats, ang problema dyan, pag rocks yung area mo, madaling matabig, tapos wala, nagugulong na yung trap mo, forever lost na siya. Itatali mo siya. So may straw ka dapat, si trap, itali mo yung straw sa trap. Tapos itatali mo yung uh, string on a, maybe kung medyo stable na rocky outcrop, o kaya kung may puno, itatali mo sa puno. Para kahit magalaw yan nung, kunyari matrap yung daga, tapos maging malikot siya sa loob, siya gugulong at malolos siya forever. Okay? So, it prevents it from, uh, uh, and also kunyari lumindol. Tapos, mawala na yung traps niya, maalod, o kaya ano, it's near a river area, tumaas yung tubig, maalod siya. At least, they have some kind of security pag tinali mo siya to uh, another uh area. So, rocks or stable, stable na rocks, agalabuin mo ng ganun. Make sure na hindi siya natatanggal. And then also, mas mga na siguro kung puno na stable. So, tatali mo siya. Uh, pitfall traps. Ang problema sa pitfall traps, hin baba yung soil. So, hindi ka makalagay ng isang buong timba ng tubig. So, ang ginagawa na lang namin is at least mga 4 inches deep na yung parang small plastic containers imbis na isang buong balde yung, yung hinuhukay namin. Ganun na lang. So yung usually ginagawa ng mga 
um, entomologist na nagsistudy na insects na small plastic containers, yun na lang yung ginagamit namin for the reptiles. So of course, hindi namin makukuha yung mga bigger snakes kasi yun nga, uh, hindi ganun kalalim yung pitfall. Pero effective pa rin siya. Nakakakuha kami ng the smaller geckos and, and stuff like that. Yan. Wait, wala na kayong maisip na iba. <laughs> Okay, so thank you po, Professor Des, sa mga tips and tricks and from which I am assuming na talagang brought about from your hardy experience na <laughs> sa field. So parang na, nakakalungkot naman na mukhang naranasan nyo nga yung inanod na bug or sa namakmak na, na other mist nets na na-donate nyo na kumbaga <laughs> doon sa location. Okay, so... Um, thank you sa lahat ng nagtanong. Thank you for everyone who has um, sent in their questions. And thank you again to Professor Des Fernandez for your answers to their questions. So, Professor Des, can they contact you ba if, if ever they have some follow-up questions or like um, questions na may isip nila after this mm -hmm. um, webinar? So, what are your contact details if you may share them? Okay, so uh, I will type my email address dito sa chat. It's dpfernandez1. May one siya. Hindi ko alam kung sino si dpfernandez, pero ako si one <laughs> at up.edu.ph. And since I also manage our socials, pwede kayo mag-message sa Facebook page ng Conserve Kaigangan. Also, while you're there, like. Tapos sa YouTube, ako rin yung nagmamanage ng comments. So once this is uploaded on YouTube and you watch it on a later date, hi, future people who will watch this, you can type in the comments and usually I'm the one who will respond to that sa YouTube. And like, subscribe, press that notification button. <laughs> Okay, so thank you po, Professor Des. So talagang comprehensive si Professor Des. So she can um, handle her wildlife situation and also the SOCMED <laughs> situations. Okay, so again, her contact um, details um, is placed in our Zoom chat box. So it's DP Fernandez 1. So kung sino man si DP Fernandez. So hi, email <laughs> DP Fernandez 1 at up.edu.ph. Okay, so thank you for our audience again for participating and thank you again, Professor Des, for your comprehensive answers. Comprehensive answers, actually. A <laughs> lot. And I will now uh, pass the um, focus on Miss Elaine as our moderator. Um, hello. <laughs> um, back. <laughs> so thank you for... Um, that uh, question and answer portion from Mam um, Des, our speaker, and Prof. Elea. And that was a very fruitful discussion. So we had some <laughs> very uh, um, interesting knowledge that we got from today, especially yung mga techniques about um, data gathering in forest over limestone. And we would like to thank everyone for um, joining this um, webinar. <laughs> uh, and um, maraming maraming salamat for um, being here and for listening. And on behalf of the program team, we would also like to thank um, our speaker. So yeah, we will give a um, certificate to Mamdes um, to be sent later via email. So um, I'd like to now share with you the um, our online evaluation form. So you can visit it here at the link um, given. So we will also share it in our comments section and in our chat box later. And um, you can also um, scan the QR code for easier access to our evaluation forms. And our um, we will send the certificates upon send, uh, accomplishing this form. So uh, I'll just let it stay here for a while so that you can scan the QR code. And uh, okay. Next is for, um, we would also like to announce um, the next um, webinar. Our uh, next week, it will be on the 28th of May. So we have our speaker all the way from Samar State University, um, Ms. Jessa Madera will um, 
um, talk on the mother about the mother's three species of summer island karst forest identification and community-based conservation. So for those who would like to join us, so please keep updated um, by checking our Facebook page and we will also send um, invitations to those who opted to receive updates during the registration uh, earlier. So here again is the online evaluation form. And so for that, we're almost at the end of our webinar. So we thank you for <laughs> participating. And also before we leave, uh, may I ask everyone to um, turn on your video so that we can have our screenshot. <laughs> Okay, um, so wait. I also, before that, I also share with you the link to our evaluation form here. Okay, I put it in our chat. Okay, okay everyone, so here is the um, link to our Google Forms. I hope you can access them now. So, I will so here, I also. Here. Oh, yeah. You can send your <laughs> meanwhile. So while waiting for everyone to <laughs> turn on their cameras, I hope you can see your <laughs> you can see the link to our Google Forms now. Okay, let's wait for some others to share. Please don't be shy. <laughs> okay. So we have your two set of screens. So okay. Um, one. So it's all right. So one, let's have our picture now. So one, two, three, smile. <laughs> and for the next page, we have two pages here. Okay. One, two, three. Pages. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you.